Assalamualaikum. I am Dr. Mufazal Akhtarwala from Safi Hospital, Mumbai. Um, I'm here to talk to you about obesity. Obesity is one of those diseases which WHO has defined as something which affects uh, not only your health but also your mental well-being. So it's a proper disease. So far, it's never been recognized as a disease, but today the number of obese people in the world are far, far more than the number of non-obese people. So if you look at uh, worldwide, America comes number one in number of obese people. Then comes China, and then comes India. The problem with Asian obesity is that China and India have the largest number of type 2 diabetics. So if you look at diabetes and obesity, type 2 diabetes is directly linked to obesity. Then you have a huge proportion of people just from China and India who probably is tackled from this problem. In Asia, we have something which is called as central obesity or obesity which is mainly on your tummy. It causes fatty liver disease or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, hepatitis. And that is why there's a higher proportion of people who are diabetic, hypertensive uh, and probably suffer from more virulent types of obesity rather than the truncal obesity which you find in the Americans. Now, obesity can be because of a host of reasons. So when you're born, with obesity and in the first few years of your life you develop massive amounts of obesity which is far ahead of the rest of the kids your age then you have to look for a genetic cause of obesity it is called monogenic cause of obesity so right from your pituitary to your uh, MIC receptors and various other things there are so many hormonal syndromes which are associated with genetic syndromes which are associated with monogenic obesity now for monogenic obesity, the only option is certain trial drugs which are out there. But any other form of obesity does not help. So you've got syndromes which you all might know of Prada Valley, where a kid starts eating anything that comes on his hand and just cannot control his obesity. So that is, that is one of the things. The next form of obesity is the polygenic obesity, which kind of happens as you grow older and because of a host of reasons. So it's a lot of your environment and what you do. And some of your own body's propensity to uh, develop that obesity. Now, when the studies were done in children, there was a paper from Dr. Yagnik from Pune, where they compared obesity, and he actually came out with a paper saying, uh, thin fat baby syndrome. Now, what he meant by thin fat baby syndrome was that Indian babies are born uh, who are generally fat, so that they have more fat mass. But their muscle mass and bone mass is much less. And that has happened because of something called the thrifty gene. Thrifty gene hypothesis is a gene which a lot of the Asians developed in the times of famine when there was not enough food. So they modified themselves in such a way that now in times of surplus, when they get a little bit of food, they put on too much. Now in places like Yemen, which I think is very close to the Indian scenario, a developing country, and it also has a propensity for the Middle East. The Middle East, the diabetes proportions are very, very high and the food patterns all dictate the way you would probably go. So if you look at all these various causes of obesity, now we get into the technical causes. You take away the genetic causes, let's say genetic causes are probably around 5% of all causes of obesity. The other 5% are hormone. Most of important is the thyroid. Most people keep looking at various thyroid reports and then they find that sometimes the thyroid reports are normal. Or even if you are grossly hypothyroid, the amount of weight you can put on is because of water retention. So you can at best put on 10 odd kilos because of hypothyroidism. So please, when you are putting on 50 or 100 kilos, don't blame it on your thyroid gland. There are various other hormones that can cause obesity. So from your adrenal gland on top of your kidney, that can produce something which is called a Scons disease and Addison's disease. And you can put on a lot of weight because of steroid hypodependence. So you will get stretch marks on your tummy, you'll have a moon face, and these are classical signs of uh, steroid-induced uh, obesity. The pituitary gland links everything with your ovary, your testes, and various other hormonal glands. So you have uh, polycystic ovary, uh, or polycystic ovarian disease in kids, uh, in women, when they develop. You have small tiny follicles of the uh, ovaries, and they in turn make you stimulate hormones in such a way that the liver produces something called a sex hormone binding globulin. Now this binds to certain hormones and it actually converts the estrogen in females 
so that they get hirsutism, they get facial hair, they get stretch marks and various masculine signs. And in men, obesity causes different things. So what this hormone basically does is converts this testosterone to estrogen and men have less fertility and various other problems. And then we come to uh, the most important cause of obesity, which is 90% of the obesity is linked to your body type, your, your social environment, what you eat, whether you exercise, what you put in, what you take out, and so socio-economic conditions will dictate your cause of obesity. So almost 80 to 90% of that kind of obesity, which is probably preventable, and that's where we are talking about. So what are the options that we do have? Uh, diet and exercise, well, that's the easiest thing to adjust, right? So what happens is that whenever your body comes to a certain weight, it's like a spring. And you pull pressure on the spring, it comes down, your weight comes down. The moment you release, the moment you release your diet, the moment you stop exercising, it just spawns up. And that is why every time you, let's say, start with 100 kilos, when you lose weight, you lose 20, 30 kilos. When you stop exercising and stop dieting, it goes above 100 because that's how a spring recoils. It always goes higher than when it comes down. So that's the biggest problem. So it's not a, it's not a personal problem. It's a physiological problem. And that's why everybody who tries to lose weight never manages to successfully continue to maintain that weight loss. And that is why you have yo-yo patterns, wherein you lose weight, put on weight, lose weight, put on weight. Now, what are the other options? Well, there are certain drugs that are available certain drugs like Olistat, which is friendly available. So when you eat unhealthy food, like fat, fatty food and everything, Olistat actually does not make your body absorb that fat and it gets dumped in your intestine. But it also causes hypertension. And best weight loss you can get is probably around a four or five kilo weight loss over a six month period and it does not really work well. What are some of the newer drugs? But some of the newer drugs are in, like injection, like liraglutide. Uh, succen succenatide and these are injections which actually take take away your appetite and, and can make you lose up to 10% of your total body weight loss. What are the other drugs? Well there are certain drugs like uh, topiramate and uh, these drugs were actually used for your for your brain for uh, convulsions and various other brain disorders and what they found is the side effect of this drug was uh, uh, weight loss and so now that topiramate combination is being used for weight loss. There are certain other drugs in trial phases also which are being used but none have been very successful in making you lose more than 5 to 10 percent of your total body weight. So when you are uh, have put on a lot of weight, let's say you've got more than 20 kilos more than what normal has to be or when you've put on your BMI is above 35 or your BMI is above 40 then you have to consider maybe bariatric surgery. A bariatric surgery is one surgery which can give you long-term sustained weight loss. So what are the pros and cons? Uh, what are the, firstly, what are the side effects of obesity? So obesity is a disease, I call it a mother of all diseases because it brings, in a human body, it brings so many diseases. So right from your brain, it can cause intracranial cerebral hypertension. Okay. The next thing, you come down, lower down, and the thyroid, hypothyroidism, it can get worsened because of obesity. Then you come to migraines and headaches, and then you come to the lungs. That area it causes uh, sleep apnea, where you can keep snoring at night and your carbon dioxide levels can go up. It can cause respiratory illnesses, and because of respiratory illnesses, it can cause right-sided heart failure. The next is obstructive lung disease. That is something that we call. Then when we come down to the abdomen, you can get gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, hiatus hernia because of obesity. A lot of other hernias are linked to obesity. Gallstones, a lot of obese people develop gallstones, that is one thing. Pancreatitis, which is definitely known to be linked with obesity. Then the most important thing, the fatty liver or the non-alcoholic steroid hepatitis. Today, the maximum number of people getting cirrhotic is because of fatty livers, not getting uh, treated properly. The other thing is, uh, when you combine hypertension, type 2 diabetes, hypercholesterolemia and join all this with everything, then it causes syndrome X or metabolic syndrome and that is what obesity causes. When you come lower down, we do understand that infertility is directly linked to obesity. 
In males, the sperm count goes down and females, it causes infertility. The other thing is a stress urinary incontinence in females where they even laugh or they, uh, they cough, they pass little amounts of urine. Then we come to the joints. So you will get osteoarthritis. So your back, your knees will start hurting more because of just the weight dependent on osteoarthritis. Then the joints can also get affected by high uric acid level, which causes uh, gouty arthritis. It can also cause uh, swelling on the legs, which is called lymphedema of obesity. The other thing is varicose veins that you can get all because of obesity. The most important thing also is the number of cancers that are linked to obesity. In women, 9% higher chance of developing breast cancer, uterine cancer, and colon cancer. In males, prostate cancer, lung cancer, and colon cancer is again very, very high. So everything from a headache to cancer, everything is linked to obesity, including infertility. So what do we do? Uh, BMI is your uh, body mass index. Now, how do we calculate that? Okay. So it is your weight in kgs divided by your height in meter square. So let's say if you were 100 kilos and your height was 1.72 meters. So it is 100 divided by 1.72 into 1.72. And that's what your BMI is. And your BMI is be between 18 to 24.5. That means you're normal. 24.5 to let's say 30 is grade one obesity. Uh, it's overweight. When you are above 30, it is grade 1 obesity. 30 to 35 is grade 1 obesity. 35 to 40 is grade 2 obesity. And above 40 is grade 3 obesity or morbid obesity. When you go above 50, they call it super obese. When you go above 60, it's super, super obese and then they stopped adding super to it. So when your BMI is above 35 and you have diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol or various other things, then you become a candidate for surgery. Or if your BMI is above 40 and you have failed all other conventional methods of diet, exercise to knock off your weight and maintain weight loss, then you should consider bariatric surgery. Now what is bariatric surgery? Bariatric surgery basically has different forms. So something as non-invasive as just putting a balloon, a gastric balloon which you can swallow or you can put endoscopically. It remains in your tummy for anywhere between 3 months to 6 months to 1 year. And it makes you feel full. If you eat too much, it makes you feel nauseous or you'll vomit and kind of controls your weight loss. You can get anywhere up to around 10, 5, 20 kilos of weight loss, depending on what your weight is. Uh, you can tend to uh, put on this weight once the balloon comes up. What are the side effects of balloon? Nausea, vomiting, and sometimes in worst case scenario, it bursts the stomach and it can come up. Very rarely, but this does happen. Then the next thing uh, is an endoscopic option where we stitch the stomach up from inside. It is called endoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. Wherein if you don't want to remove your stomach, we go with an endoscope. It is a daycare procedure. You go and stitch your stomach around and you create like a, a, like a little sleeve. And that is one, one option. Then we come to the real surgeries, bariatric surgery. So first we used to place a band on top of the stomach, which was called gastric banding. Uh, now that has lost favor and not too many people are doing it because bands are, people would put on weight again, people, bands are getting eroded and various other things. Then we come to the sleeve gastrectomy. What do we do in a sleeve gastrectomy is we remove two thirds of the stomach, basically, and make a stomach like a banana shape and leave around 70 to 80 ml of stomach inside. This is called sleeve gastrectomy. This is irreversible surgery. You remove two thirds of the stomach and you throw it so you can never replace it. Uh, what, what are the, it gives very good weight loss results in most patients. It is used in younger people, uh, people who can exercise and diet and various other things. What are the side effects? It can cause more of gastroesophageal reflux disease, uh, burning, and sometimes you can tend to regain some of the weight back. It can also cause iron deficiency anemia. Then we come to the gastric bypass. The gastric bypass ideally is supposed to be a gold standard. You make a small little pouch of the stomach above, so you bypass 80% of the stomach, the entire duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine, and the first 100 to 150 centimeters of the jejunum. Now, small intestine is between anywhere between 7 to 10 meters long. It can be shorter in some people, it can be longer in some people. Averagely, in 90% of the people, it's between 7 to 10 meters long. So you bypass the first meter, meter and a half, and then food does not enter in this part of the stomach, and you join the remaining part directly up. So food enters from the 
stomach pouch where there are satiety sensors and you feel full, you can't eat too much and then goes directly into the intestine. By bypassing stomach and the first part of the intestine, majority of the fat absorption comes up and therefore you lose weight. But also you need to be on vitamin uh, B12, calcium and iron for the rest of your life. Then there are certain other procedures called the mini gastric bypass where instead of dividing the stomach in a Y shape, you can loop the uh, intestine around 150 or one and a half to two meters away and make a longer pouch. Then there is uh, very, very, if someone is 300, 400 kilos, then these procedures might not work. So you will have a procedure called as a SADI or a single anastomosis duodenal hydrostomy or a, a, a duodenal switch which would make you lose at least 200 to 250 kilos and maintain that weight loss. So you bypass almost the whole small intestine and leave only 200 centimeters of the small intestine intact to absorb. This causes a lot of diarrhea, you have to be on a lot of proteins, micronutrients for the rest of your life. So these are surgeries meant only for very few people and should not be used by everybody. Or you can have side effects. What are the advantages of bariatric surgery? Well, it not only makes you lose weight and maintains that weight loss, but also will get rid of diabetes in more than 70-80% of the people, blood pressure, sleep apnea, hypertension gets controlled, thyroid gets controlled, uh, infertility gets resolved, and it generally makes you a much more healthier, fitter person. Uh, what are the uh, side effects? Well, you have to take multivitamins, and if some, sometimes the surgeries can go wrong, there can be a lot of complications. So you have to go and tackle these problems. All in all, obesity is a lifelong chronic disease which can affect your, your lifestyle, your health in a way you don't want it. So you need to tackle it, you need to use all means in your power to tackle it, whether it's diet and exercise, whether it's medicines or whether it's bariatric surgery, but you can tackle it all the same.